Apple has made some bold claims recently about RAM, claiming that 8 gigabytes on their new Macs is the same as 16 on older Macs and PCs. But Apple isn't telling the whole story here. In many cases, Apple is just flat out wrong. And sadly, this leads to consumers buying the wrong Mac, getting frustrated, and rightfully blaming Apple for misleading them. Apple seems to think their RAM, known as unified memory, is this magical pixie dust. And while it's great in many ways, it's time we all be honest and explain in plain English what unified memory actually is and how it differs from traditional RAM. So if you're looking to buy a new Mac and you want to know how much RAM you actually need, I'm going to give you some simple, easy tools you can use today to help you make the best possible decision. And the best part, these tools are totally free and already on your computer. I'll also go over one of the biggest mistakes many people are making today when choosing RAM for their next Mac and how you can avoid making the same mistake. So let's dive in. So what even is RAM anyways? Well, think of it this way. Computers have long-term storage and short-term memory, often called RAM. Long-term storage is great for storing photos, videos, applications, and documents long-term. But when you need to access these things, what your computer often does is load them into short-term memory. Since this short-term memory is much faster, this allows your computer to quickly access things it needs. So you can see why in many ways, having more RAM could speed up your computer. So why is Apple saying we don't need as much memory? To better understand this, we need to understand what unified memory actually is. Traditional computers have all of these separate modules that communicate with each other through a motherboard. Think of it like different rooms in a house that are all spread out. If you need something from the kitchen, but you're in your room on the opposite side of the house, it's gonna take a second to walk over to the kitchen, grab the thing, and walk back to your room. But what if you live in a studio apartment where the kitchen is your room. <laughs> well, that's actually what Apple has done here. You see, instead of having all of these rooms spread out like a traditional computer, Apple took all of these separate rooms and just combined them into one room. So now, if you need to grab something from the kitchen, you literally just reach over and grab it. This is similar to how unified memory works and is one of the reasons why it's so great. It reduces the transit time, known as latency, from one module to the other. Ultimately, it means all the bits and pieces on your computer can all work together faster. But that still doesn't fully explain why Apple thinks you need less RAM. What actually happens when you don't have enough? When you don't have enough RAM, your computer is going to swap out information quickly back and forth from that long-term storage to short-term memory, your RAM. The second it doesn't need something in short-term memory, it'll push that back into long-term storage and then grab something else it may need. With older hard drives, this was slow and tedious. However, with modern SSDs, especially the kind that are used in Macs today, this swapping process is actually extremely fast. This right here is partly why Apple can get away with these bold claims. Since their SSDs are so much faster than before and unified memory itself has less latency, for some tasks, you can get away with having less RAM. However, that doesn't apply to everyone. So now let's answer that question. How much RAM do you really need on Apple Silicon? If you own a Mac, there's a free tool already on your computer, which is going to be extremely helpful when deciding how much RAM you really need. That app is called Activity Monitor, and this is going to tell you how much RAM you currently use and more importantly, what your memory pressure is. I'll get to that in a second, but for PC users, there's a similar app on Windows called Task Manager, and you can use that app in a similar way. So. Here's what you do. I want you to try and overload your computer. Think of the most demanding tasks you do, tasks you feel your computer start to slow down. If you're not totally sure, a really easy thing you can try is just open up Chrome with 20 to 30 tabs and just browse around. Chrome notoriously loves to chew through RAM. While you have your demanding tasks open, I want you to open up Activity Monitor and click on the Memory tab. Start using the apps you have open to try and simulate how much you push your computer to its limits. This is your chance to go a bit crazy. 
open those 30 Chrome tabs, edit that 8K video, render that 3D animation, or run a AAA game, well, one that's supported on Mac. After pushing your system for a time, maybe five to 10 minutes, check Activity Monitor. More specifically, check the Memory Pressure tab on the bottom. If it stayed green this entire time, chances are the amount of RAM you currently have is probably enough for your needs. If at any point this goes into the yellow or it goes into the red, this means you're pushing the limits of your computer and it's probably time for a RAM upgrade. However, whether you're pushing the limits of your current system or not, what if you want to future-proof your next computer? One of the major drawbacks of Apple Silicon is how RAM is hardwired onto the chip. This means you can't upgrade your RAM after you buy your Mac. One of the biggest mistakes people make when buying a new Mac is they buy how much RAM they think they'll need today and don't think about how much RAM they'll need in the future. This is called future-proofing and is why I strongly suggest all users, even casual users, start with a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM. However, for many of you, this is still not gonna be enough. That's why using Activity Monitor is a great resource to see what your current needs are. Just make sure if you want to future-proof your Mac, go one step higher than what you think you'll need when you configure your Mac. You may be wondering, after all of this, why does Apple even sell Macs with 8 gigabytes of RAM when clearly almost all users would benefit going to 16? Truly, there are two reasons why, but they both come down to money. The first reason is Apple wants to keep their entry-level prices low, but retain huge profit margins. An easy way to do this is just sell entry-level Macs with lower configurations to force users to upgrade. This gives off the illusion that Macs are actually pretty affordable when in reality, they're not as affordable as Apple would like you to think. However, there's a second often overlooked reason, which is that Apple sells millions of these machines to schools and businesses at bulk discounts. I mean, you could hardly call them a discount, but that's beside the point. This all being said, Apple, it's 2024. Please, for the love of God, stop selling Macs with 8 gigabytes of RAM. At the bare minimum, you could maybe compromise and go to 12 gigabytes as the base. Just something other than 8. It's starting to get a bit ridiculous now. To wrap it up, Apple might be bending the truth a bit, but armed with this info, you can make smarter choices when buying your next Mac. If you haven't seen it, check out my last video where I did a deep dive into Apple's computer chips and explain which chip you should get for your next Mac. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more Apple-related content. I'm a brand new channel on YouTube and I really appreciate all the support. Thanks so much and have a great one. See ya.